Greetings Yassar, welcome to another Sabian classic by the master teacher Baba Yanun, one of his great works, The Holy Tablets. Introduction A personal note from the receiver. I call you to accept this truth as bestowed upon me by the masters who guide my pen, for of myself I could not have done the works of it. There were a host of great Nuwapian leaders such as Dusi Ali, the Honourable Elijah Muhammad, Sheikh Al Hajj Daoud Faisal, Clarence Jawa Smith, Clifton E. March, Noble Jural Ali, Marcus Garvey, to name a few, who have all contributed to the upliftment of the fallen and trodden over, and much abused Nuwapian moors. Many newsletters, books, and newspapers have been written. Yet the conditions of the Nawapians have not changed. As the saying goes, Allah does not help a people until they help themselves. It's time for you to get up and do something for yourselves. This is the scripture that is divinely inspired that will bring about a long overdue change. Like the phoenix bird rising from its ashes. Up you mighty people, come forth like Lazarus from the tomb. This tablet is food to feed the hunger and to nourish the soul. To give it strength, rise up, stand up, be counted amongst the people of this world. This tablet will restore the savour to the salt, that you may spice the whole world, that you may taste the sweet savour, and that you may spice up the lives of all that you come in contact with. For in these tablets is no doubt, it's the true guidance that you can be sure of. But only those with an inner ear will be able to hear the voice of our Heavenly Father calling to his children to gather on, the holy Kodesh, the golden city of Wanahi, and sit at the feet of his son, the Lamb, that has been transformed into the Lion, Tammuz, as known to many as HaMashiach, the true Messiah, when he returns, as heralded by the receipt of this most holy text, the Holy Tablets, Naya Malachi Zadok El. This holy scripture is needed. The holy tablets come from the ancient original tablets inscribed in cuneiform, later borrowed and in part to form what became the Torah, which became the Holy Bible, which yielded many scriptures, old as well as new, and even later the Holy Quran. This is by far the greatest of all, for it contains all they were trying to express, but couldn't because they didn't have the whole truth and all the facts. Look at the world today, when human beings and angelic beings alike no longer have an effect on the minds and souls of a people on a planet such as this one. Then Anu, who is Alien Alien El, the Most High, called by Arabs al Aliu, the Most High, and its 36 number of the 99 best names of Allah, the Source, brings into being a supreme being referred to as a Zadok, or one of the Anunakai Alahum, and endows this being an Illa Mutajasid, an avatar, with the right knowledge, right wisdom and right understanding. We are at such a time now, and the answers are to be found within the pages of the Holy Tablets, also called the Book of the Lamb. Many leaders and teachers claim to be your saviors, but all use just the same books, Bibles or Qurans, or books written thousands of years before their time, outdated information. But you need your history renewed by a renewer, a reformer, an El Mutadud, not the 1400-year-old interpretation of the Quran, or the 4000-year-old interpretation of the Torah, or the 2000-year-old interpretation of the New Testament called the Bible. Not to mention all the misleaders who have come along and made up their own interpretations to mislead you. Well, the time has come for that renewer, and this is it. He has renewed El's holy Torah, El's holy English, El's Holy Sabor, El's Holy Quran, the Holy Quran Circle 7, the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, the Problem Book of the Poor Righteous Teachers of this planet, the Egyptian Book of the Dead coming forth by day, and more. He has translated from the original tongues for you, and that you may be renewed. Let's see what a Muslim would say. Muhammad is the last and greatest or the seal of the prophets, and the Quran is the last scriptures. But this can't be true. Just look at the very condition of the planet Earth and the state of its inhabitants. I have prophesied many things in the many books that I have put forth, and they have all come to pass thus far. And I have foretold even more events that would come unto this world, and they shall also come to pass. You will find in the many books that I have set the record straight. All of these 
prophecies should tell you that the Arabic Quran that they have today is not the final message of salvation. Just look at the Muslim world divided against itself, killing and fighting each other over the Quran which was revealed in the year 610, over 1400 years ago called Al-Quran. And its author Mustafa Muhammad Al-Amin who died in the year 632 AD from poison in his food. Its message has not put an end to the evil that plagued the world and in fact caused more wars and evils that's happened because of the Quran and how Muslims have misinterpreted it and what it makes its followers feel about all others. The Quran and the Bible has failed more than any other books ever written in so far that they are misunderstood by those who claim to follow them to the letter. As for the Hebrew Torah, it does not preach salvation, merely history and geography. So now it's time for a scripture to be revealed in this day and time for a people who are lost but now found. Read the holy tablets and decide for yourself, for the hourglass is almost empty. The holy tablets was divinely inspired after reading the Torah, the holy Quran, the Ratib, the book of light, the Egyptian book of the dead, the writings of Confucius, the book of Buddha, the tablets of Adapha, the tablet of Nurgle and Arishkigil, the tablet of Ishtar and Tammuz, and the tablet of Itana, the Adra Hasis, the Akkadian tablets, the Gilgamesh epics, the tablets of Anzu, and the Sumer tablets, and the events and leaders and their teachings that unfolded from those tablets to this present day. You will not only find that what has been revealed to me is without doubt, but it will bring you towards a greater understanding of your inner self. What is behind the words in this text is all that has come through me to bring you to the next level. This is why I have been sent to you, in order that you receive this divine revelation, one that has never before been compiled into one text. I am one of those teachers who have come with a message for a people, so gather yourselves and know that within the confines of these pages is the right knowledge, the right wisdom and the right understanding, which leads to sound right reasoning. Walk with me on the narrow path and take the overdue first step and read with the intent of understanding all that has been given. For in this text there is undisputed truths, which are facts beyond any doubt. This holy tablets will not only lead you to right thinking, it will take you to the next level. It will, if understood, break the spell, the spell of ignorance, ignoring the facts, the spell of sleep, the spell of spiritual ignorance and racial blindness. Within these tablets you may find a similarity to many holy scriptures such as the Torah, the Injil, the Zabur, the Quran and many spiritual writings as well as learned people whose information in these days and times are being forgotten or misused. I have read most of what has been recorded on this planet. Find the truths of their messages necessary for the people on the earth to get a full and complete overstanding of the truth. It's no coincidence that these tablets are laced with these messages for truth is truth and the will pursue passes their teachers interpretation. This scripture is a holy scripture, divinely inspired from the spirits who incarnate in the form of prophets, apostles and sires who have spoken to my heart and activated my mind to bring you this final revelation. Within its covers you will find guidance from this to the next world and on. My child, in this world you must understand that the most authentic and safe means of achieving purity of the soul and contentment of the heart is to devote your tongue to the remembrance of the all. To know the all is to ponder over the significance of your growth as an individual and to accustom yourself to the absorption of facts in your mind and heart in perfect faith and awareness. The Holy Tablet affirms that you are all in the all and the all is a part of you. And know this, this holy tablet that is divinely inspired is to prepare the way for the end. The best course to achieve this end is that you should recite the words within the confines of these pages with zeal and fervor and develop the habit to study regularly. Study also with devotion and concentration the teachings of our great teachers. This is how it was revealed to me and this is how I give it unto you. Chapter 1 The Creation Begin all acts and thinking by using El Kalum, the All. Tablet 1, the epic of creation and before. 19 times 6 equals 114. Hello my children, allow me to speak with you, for it is that time again, every 25,000 years for the renewal of your way of life in Wapu. Let me speak with you of the beginnings of life before and after the knowledge bestowed upon you of your very own creation the making of this planet that you call Earth, and many other planets of which you have no knowledge of. 
Your soul, that is the emotional you, is about to embark on a journey through time and space within existence, through a time not yet encountered by the Behem or the human beast, and the humming beings, and the children of the Elohim. The humming being of Hu, creative force of will, and Mim, also Mami, meaning the deity of birth, which is another name for Mother Ninti who gave birth to the mortals. The human beings of Hu, the creative force of will, and Main from the Latin spirits of the dead. Within the confines of this holy tablet you shall embark on such knowledge which has never been made so clear before this for you by any. Let me start by telling you about the beings that existed trillions of earth years ago, before the Precambrian period. Before you, human beings were created in physical form upon the planet Tiamat, now called Earth from the word Eridu. There existed supreme beings of green light, ethereal and sub-supreme beings of the impure amber light fire. You cannot fully comprehend their beginnings because their time zone is much greater than you and your ability to comprehend at this point. Yet this very tablet which you are holding in your hand will open your eyes to their time zones that are in and beyond space. These supreme beings called the Anunnaki or Natiru, whose way of life was called Nawapu, were endowed by El Kulun the All with a superior overstanding of 720 degrees in all, 360 degrees of spiritual or ethereal state, the circle, and 360 degrees of physical material state, the square. Glory be to the one appointed who is called in tones Anu and on earth El Elo, known to many by different titles, and the best of which is known to you as Ansars is Allah, in which he is 360 degrees of the physical world and the light of this heaven and earth in which he is also. You should know that eventually the time will come when these supreme beings, the Anunnaki, would have to descend upon earth in order to guide the inhabitants back to their home in and beyond the stars, thereby helping them to become once again the supreme beings of the pure green light, ethereal energy that they once were. But first one must be sent to prepare a way, and that one is myself. And so it was, for once Hummims became rulers of the planet Earth, you gradually forgot that your purpose in life was to gain your way back towards the sustainer, which would be the token home, but instead you became engrossed in your own desires. While in pursuit of physical gratification and material gain, Hummims forgot the purity with which they were formed. As a result, you have strayed from the original ways of the universe and the spiritual path that led you to your true destiny. Universal right knowledge, right wisdom, and the right overstanding on to sound right reasoning called Nuwapu. Nuwapu informs you that there were three creations, original or primary creation, primus, from premise first, before the lightest atom, hydrogen, energies existed as a form of energy existing in the form of gases. Nine levels of them from quirks to biops to zeals, referred to as subatomic energy. Before weight or the sum of any weights registering as nothingness, yet existing being lighter than the first form of existence, hydrogen. Secondary or evolutionary creation, the evolving of existence from density to matter to atoms to cells to organisms to bodies. And and tertiary, tertius, from tertus third or ghostational creation, the breath of life, the living soul, the existing conscious being. Primary creation was performed by the nine ether beings, simply etherans, who science is Nuwaku. Nine ether represents birth, conception in a nine, and birth or sum total of numbers. There are no numbers actually higher than nine. Nuwaku means to convey a message that results in sound right reasoning, so there must be a conveyor and a listener of the message. The message is life, the conveyor is existence. Three sets of three or triple darkness. First set before light, before energy, before matter. Second set before time, before space, before place. Third set before body, before soul, before spirit. Nine ether is the combination of all existing gases of nature. Nothing anywhere can be as powerful as all the existing gases. On Earth, these gases are known as radon RN with an atomic number of 26, xenon XE with an atomic number of 54, krypton KR with an atomic number of 36, argon AR with an atomic number of 18, neon NE with an atomic number of 10, and helium HE with an atomic number of 2. 
These are also called the noble gases on a periodic or elemental chart on the physical chart. However, on the ethyl chart they are listed as E2, E10, E18, E26, E36 and E54. And note the word element and elementary from elementum, first principle, rudiment, beginning. Used as elementary, the beginning without importance as of yet. Therefore, 9 ether is the most potent power in all the boundless universes. 9 ether is the original creator who grew all the universes. 9 ether beings utilize the forces that yield energy, versing energy into one form, the universe. Uni meaning uni from unis, one, and verse meaning verta, to turn a spiral, spiraling outward from a single point. Creation from the word creera, to bring forth, create, produce, to cause to grow, means growth into form or system. Destruction means change in form or composition. Nine ether is conscious and conscience gases. The melanites, the original woolly-haired, dark-skinned mers or moors, came along with the original creation. That is the same kind of ether forces that grew the universe. As nature was growing, these melanites were part of the original growth. Melanin grew with the original creation. To come along with a thing is to grow with or within it. Six ether are nine points from ether one into darkness. The melanites manifest from point one in hydrogen on into nine elements, the eighth being oxygen for life. The dot, nagut, is the point of origin of things, the first sum. Therefore, the melanites and their evolutionary descendants are the personification of the original creative forces, who, seven in all. As the seven species of Riskians, you have seven species of melanites or Nuwapians, called Negroids, and you have three species of Mongoloids and two species of Caucasoid, all growing out of the original Nuwapians. Simply, these melanites created the universes in their etheric form. Nine ether then personified themselves as flesh and blood beings. They became human beings from atoms to atom. There are two kinds of ether, nine ether and six ether in human form. Nine ether negroid produce six ether caucasoid, and six ether produce ghost, death. Not to be mistaken with the ethers of hair that range from six, seven, eight and nine in hair texture, from flat to hollow to round. Nine ether will become six ether through time and age, die. Six ether becomes ghost through time and age. Six ether albino is nine ether Nuwapians in death and ghost is the death of six ether. After the death of six ether, nine ether resurrects again. Six ether is the moon and nine ether is the sun. Hence, six ether is adverse to nine ether, just as death is the first to life. All this takes place within the all. It was then that the true force of the universe personified those supreme beings. The original melanites, dark-skinned, woolly-haired moors, personified by both sound and electric energy. Both positive and negative electro, from the modern Latin electris, meaning resembling amber, amber, being negative and magnetic from the Latin magnetis, lodestone, being positive, light or the illuminati being electro, and the light spectrum being magnetic. The cosmic ray for emerald being from 001 nanometer, nana equals the deity sin, meter equals mother or meta in tones, matar meaning matter or material, form to 99,000 miles. Nanometer is the modern term used, preferred over angstrom used in measuring visible light. One nanometer is 10 to the 9 1 billionth of a meter and is equal to one angstrom being a unit of length equal to one hundredth millionth of a centimeter used especially to specify radiation wavelengths. After Anders Jonas Angstrom, a Swedish astronomer and physicist, light is defined by wavelengths, which is the measure of the distance from one peak or top of a wave of light or energy to another. Cosmic rays being the shortest and the longest being electric power. Between the two are gamma rays, which is electronic radiation sent from radioactive decay, ranging from 10,000 to 10 million electron volts. X-rays, which is a relatively high energy photon or amount of electronic energy used for penetration power, 
also ultraviolet light rays, which are a range of invisible radiation ranging from 4 nanometers to 380 nanometers, just beyond the color violet in the visible spectrum. Infrared light rays, a range of invisible radiation, bordering along microwaves about 750 nanometers. Microwaves, a high frequency electromagnetic wave measuring 1 millimeter to 1 meter in length. Television waves, the transferring of visual images and sound using electromagnetic waves with the reconversion of received waves into visual images. Radio waves, a wireless transmission through space with a frequency of 10 kilohertz to 300,000 megahertz. And electric power, coming from the reaction of attraction and repulsion of unalike and alike proton and electrons. Television waves and radio waves are also forms of light laser. There is also the visible spectrum, which runs from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers in wavelength. Nanometers being one billionth of a meter, from the word nana, the Sumerian deity Sin, and meter from the Greek metron meaning measure. With all light throwing through a prism or a medium that represents whatever is seen through it, used to separate white light coming from the Latin prisma, from the Greek prisma, things sawed off, prism, from praying, prisine, to saw, the light becomes six colors, yellow, blue, red, green, orange, and purple. Light in its aspheric form is at its atomic level. When you see full spectrum light in physical state, it manifests as blackness. That is, all light and color combined are blackness, and the manifestation of the solid form of light is melanin. Thus they manifested from the great circle and throne of wisdom to this meager place. This is how the events of creation and pre-creation were recorded, when life existed in and beyond the stars. The all is, was and will be, felt with love, a divine love that is unknown or felt by those disagreeable beings, and thus emotions were. At the first birth of emotions was the birth of motion. Things gradually began to move about, and it was then that movement and motion were conceived out of triple darkness, for the light birthed the chaos. Thus the motion to create did manifest in existence, and all that exists exists within the all. Thus things became what they were to become known as, before they existed, or what they would exist as. This is true caring. If you say you love Anu, then why do you not have faith in Anu? who is also known as El Elo, who is called in rhythm Allah by the Muslims, meaning ones who are of peace. Be on your guard, for they have been invaded by the disagreeable one's children as well. Anu is also called Yahweh by the Hebrews, Theos by the Christians, and God by many others. He was appointed by the All as your caretaker. Anu appointed one of the Yahwehans called Tammuz, son of Ishtar or Inanna, daughter of Nana Sin, also called Isis or Aset, also called Astarte, Astaroth, the Thygrian Sibyl, and Kali. This Tammuz was also called in tones Horus, Theos, Yeshua, Isa, Jesus, Christos, a son of the Muzi, who is also called Osiris, Usir, Dian, Ushadist, and Eli and the Abba of Tammuz, or Abatala, the Heavenly Father, son of the Heavenly One, Anu. Thus it is said of Tammuz, when the Enoshites began to call upon the name of Yahweh. If you say you have faith by way of him, who is your caretaker Anu, who appointed Yeshua HaMashiach, called Isa, Jesus, and Tammuz, then I ask you, why do you not trust him? For it is Anu, also called El, that is trustworthy. If you say you love him, why do you not strive towards him? And if you say you are sensible, then why do you not tremble at the mention of Anu? Surely it is Anu who has been appointed your caretaker, and has appointed the Anointed One, a Yahuwah called Tammuz, from which the door at the gate of Yahuwah, the women of that house wept for Tammuz. This is merely one of the many houses of Yahuwah. This is recorded in the scripture of Ezekiel, 8th degree, the 14th verse. This appointment of Anu was done by the All, within the All, for as Anu became who he is, it had to be in accordance with the will of All, and the appointment of the Anointer was done by Anu, both being Yahwehans in the All. It is he, Anu, who has transformed from Ether into a flesh-embodied being, and then returns at will to Ether. 
He was an appointed El Elo Allah who saw the confusion which was caused by the fusion of emotions. The collision of emotions in this solar system came into being as time passed. It became known emotionally as that which is the right to do and that which is the wrong to do. Those who agree and those who disagree, the actor is good and the actor is evil. Thus the birth of will is the beginning of confusion. Confusion arose, and this somberness, a dull feeling, was felt in his and his heart. Out of divine love and great concern with compassion and caring, he began to call out and ordered all the blessed and chosen children of the All, the Ephraims, who incarnated into the form of the Anunnaki, which is known to many as Allahum or Natiru, as known to the ancient Egyptians, he ordered them to incarnate in his spirit, with the responsibilities for this now desolate solar system. It was here that life of all kinds and spiritual beings lived and thrived. Those extraterrestrials, the sky dwellers, who came to this planet be they extraterrestrials, Anunnaki, Natiru, Elohim, angelic beings, or be they of the terrestrial, that is this planet Earth, the land dwellers and even those beings who came to the land from the deep sea, and all the species of all that were agreeable people and disagreeable people who did tread to and fro on the earth's surface, the ground, and swarm in the seas and flew in the skies, of this planet Ki, now called Earth, from the word Iridu. But by the disorder of these disagreeable species was destruction caused by meteorites, which are large pieces of debris that enter the atmosphere and reaches the ground, and that caused the light of the sun to be blocked by dust clouds. Meteorites are chips of asteroids that can be rock or metal. The daylight had gone where pure light once was, and no light reigned. Void was upon the surface of the deep. Ordering his spirit beings to hover above the surface of the deep while the great spirit prepared for the reconstruction of this now desolate place. It was to be a great replenishing, yet not without fault, for life does dwell beneath the deep. The greatest variety of organism lives beneath the deep seas of the planet Tiamat. These sea waters make up 85% of all water on the earth. Under this vast watery surface are the tallest peaks and the deepest valleys in the planet. Seawater is really pure water in which compounds have been dissolved. Salts account for most of these dissolved substances. And the total amount of salts dissolved in seawater is known as salinity, from the Latin word salinus, from sal meaning salt. A rejuvenation and another chance was in the heart and mind of the most holy spirit. So one was selected from amongst the many to be guardian over these beings, to be born to be El Rahamul, the merciful, and El Ramun, the yielder. El Hakam, he who is wise. El Gedush, he who is holy. El Yataf, he who is kind, and he who is the establisher of peace, he who is the peace, El Salam, the loving El Ashug, and the one and only sustainer of the solar system, soon to become the tri-solar system in the preparation for the elders' arrival. The other suns are already on their way. One such brighter light or star, about 25,000 light years from Earth, has been seen in the direction of Sagittarius constellation, being named the Pistol Star, which cannot be seen with the naked eye because of the dust clouds which absorb the visible light of stars. This sun is 10 million times as bright as the sun already existing in this solar system. And when my soul has spoken unto me, and has confirmed in my heart and mind, glory be to El Sabur, the patient, Selah. Glory be to the kind, El Latuf. Glory be to Anu, he who is the giver, El Nafan. Glory be to the endower, El Wahab. Glory be to he who is the bestower, El Mana. Glory be to he who is the healer, El Shafe. Glory be to the first, El Wah. Glory be to the honor, El Mauz. Glory be to the supporter, El Tamul. Glory be to Anu, he who is the sufficient. Glory be to Elion Elion El. He who is the protector. Glory be to El Habuk. He who is the embracer. And glory be to the helper. And glory be to the one El Wahed. Glory be to the only one. And glory be to the encourager El Saju. Glory be to the benefactor El Manun. Glory be to the enduring El Bagai. Glory be to the uplifter El Rafur. Glory be to the light El Nawar. Glory be to El Yahuwah, he who is the beneficent El Jalal, Sella. Glory be to the supreme El Azum. Glory be to the evident El Zahur.
Being one of the Anunnaki, he is called Anu, the Source, who is the son of Anshar and Kishar, the chosen son of the faithful, El Amun Mul. O Anunnaki, he who has descended into and around me, guide me in all that I do. Help me that I may help all Hamims. Let me speak from your head and not my own. Let me care from your heart and not from my own. Let me see from your eyes and not see from my own. I am Melchizedek, known in tones as Yanun and El Kupt, Al Sayyida Isa Al Hadi Admati, Amanubi Rakpata, Rabboni Yeshua Bar El Hadi, who is the Maku Nayamalakai Zadok El of today, I am to serve, not rule. Make me of your best of servants. I am sent to fix that which is broken. I incarnate from time to time for those who are in need of my presence in the flesh. I am an Anunakai, an Alahum, an Avatar, or an Ilamutajasid, who you would simply call and known as an angelic being.